Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad you joined me for Wednesday Bible study. Today's a new day, and tomorrow's going to get better because you and I are going to read the Bible to know how to please God and do His will. But before we get into the Word, I'd like to say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. I thank you, Lord, for the people you've drawn to hear the Word of God today. And please, Father, fill me with double your Holy Spirit, as much Spirit as you so desire to give me. And thank you, Lord, for putting the Scriptures together in the order that you want me to read them. And thank you for putting the message together. And I pray it be your words spoken out of my mouth, not mine. And your will always be done, not mine, Father. I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Sometimes you may hear me say Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. So if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 55, and reading from verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is long-suffering. That means he's patient for us to repent our sinful ways and come back to him. If we go into a backslide and we start sinning perpetually, like the prodigal son, and he wants to pardon us, and he wants us to come back to him. Or maybe you're not saved at all. And you haven't given up your life for him. As he gave up his life on Calvary. And died for our sins. Paid the penalty for us. So that we could be saved. And receive the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, the scripture says we're not his. In the Old Testament, in the old time, people would receive the Holy Spirit temporarily as needed. But because of what our Lord and Savior did on Calvary, died and rose and left the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, you and I are able to have the Holy Spirit 24-7. We can talk to the Lord at all times and He hears us. It's amazing. It's powerful. It's part of Jesus inside of us. And if you don't have that, you need that, brothers and sisters, or you won't go to heaven when you die. You'll go to hell. So let's read some more scripture. Turn with me to the second Peter chapter three. Reading verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that shall come to repentance. Now, not slack concerning his promises, his promise to return, to take up his church, to be king of his kingdom. And we get to live with him for eternity. But he doesn't wish anyone to go to hell, but to come on to repentance. And repentance means to turn from your sinful ways. Because if you don't, you can't be saved. You understand? Let's look at another scripture. Turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, 
and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, baptism in the name of Jesus and repentance is the foundation of salvation. And you need that. So if you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus, do it. If you were baptized as a little baby, it's not working for you. You need to be emerged all the way in the water and come up. And you need to know right from wrong. You need to be of an age of 12 years or older. So you need to understand who Jesus is, what, what evil is, what bad is, what sin is, what's not sin. And you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to believe, right? Faith in baptism is your first payments. I say payments. If you were with me on Sunday, on Resurrection Day, I used an illustration of uh, a married man to a wife, the married man being God and the wife being us, the church, and he pays our school fees. And he did that by dying on Calvary, on a crucifixion death for you and me, paid our penalty. He bought us, and it was a, a hefty price, right? And so we need to pay back the school fees by living for him. As Romans 12, 1 says, it's our reasonable service for our bodies to be a living sacrifice for him. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 33, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. So when you decide to give your life to Jesus and repent, the first thing you need to do is get rid of evil company because they will corrupt your good habits. More than likely, the sinner is going to cause you to sin. Do you understand? So if you had a problem drinking and you would go and stop at the bars five days a week and drink with your friends, you can't do that anymore. You can't hang out in the bars. You can't hang out wherever those people are doing the sin that the devil knew what to get you with. Maybe it was drugs. You can't hang around with those people that are taking drugs. They will cause you to sin. I quoted Romans... 12.1 and I'm going to read you 12.2 and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God now the next step once you've gotten rid of evil company is you need to renew your mind you see we are born with the spirit of the world. And that spirit of the world has a carnal mind. And you need to get rid of that carnal mind. And so you have to renew your mind. Once you have renewed your mind by making proper changes in your life, God will renew your mind completely. A baby Christian, someone who just becomes a Christian, goes to the altar and says the Lord's Prayer, and even gets rid of evil company, they still have that carnal mind, the, the spirit of the world, and they haven't received the Holy Spirit yet. So you have to get rid of that carnal mind, and then God will fill you with the Holy Spirit, and you will no longer have that evil spirit. He will deliver you. He will cast out that evil spirit, and he will come in and commune with your spirit and your soul with his Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. All right, turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, reading from verse 22. That you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, 
and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on that new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Okay? So we need to put on that new man or woman and start following the spirit, the spirit of God, and not the flesh, the fleshly desires that the devil wants to tempt everyone with. Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. See, brothers and sisters. So when, when you had renewed your mind by making proper changes in your life, getting rid of evil company, getting rid of HBO or whatever computer sites that you visit that have lust, that satisfies your carnal mind, get rid of it. Get rid of anything. Remember, the Lord says, better to pluck out your eye and go to heaven with one eye than to go to hell with two. Right? Yes. So make the proper changes. And when you have done that, worthy to receive the Holy Spirit, God will renew your mind completely and renew your heart as the word of God says here and give you a pure loving heart and fill you with the Holy Spirit. Lord says in Matthew chapter five, that those with a pure heart will see God. You must have a pure heart, you must have Jesus inside of you, because if you have Jesus inside of you, that's love, and you'll have that pure heart. So many people out there will be mean to people, and not even think anything of it because they don't have Jesus in their heart. And you've got to have that love, brothers and sisters. And when you do, you will see the fruits of the Spirit coming out of you. Love, peace, joy, gentleness, mercy, all the things that our Lord and Savior Jesus showed all the people that he encountered what we need to be like. You know, many of you are already saved and you already have the Holy Spirit. You've already reached that plateau. Don't lose it. We have to keep in repentance. The devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy anything that's God's. And you're God's. And so when you get the Holy Spirit, he doesn't stop tempting. He tempted Jesus. Do you not know he'll tempt you? He will. And the Lord knows that you're going to make mistakes. Only Jesus walked the earth perfect. But when we make that mistake, we ask him for forgiveness and praise God. Praise Yeshua. He forgives us. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, today's a new day and tomorrow's going to get better because you and I are going to continue our walk in repentance until the day we see our Lord face to face and be with him for eternity. Amen? Amen.